What are maps and globes? A globe is a scale model of the Earth. Because a globe is a sphere, like the Earth, it is the best representation of things that appear on the Earth's surface. A globe shows accurate shapes, sizes, distances, and directions, all at the same time. Unfortunately, globes are difficult to carry around. Most of the countries are very small, and you cannot put a lot of detail on it. A map is a representation of all or part of the Earth's surface on a flat piece of paper. We use them because they present information about the Earth in a simple graphic way. Unlike globes, they are easy to carry around and reproduce, and they can show a lot more detail than globes. One disadvantage that all maps have, especially maps that show the entire world, is that they cannot show things as accurately as a globe can. All maps have some degree of distortion. Some maps show the true area of the continents, but the shapes are not accurate. Others show the real shapes of the continents while distorting something else on the map. But why are things distorted on maps? Distortion occurs whenever you try to represent the curved surface of the Earth on a flat piece of paper. Cartographers or map makers have had this problem from the earliest beginnings of map making. Imagine drawing the continents on a round object, like a ball or an orange, and then, after making a cut down one side of the sphere, trying to lay that surface of the object flat. It won't lie flat. The curved surface will wrinkle or tear. Cartographers have avoided as much distortion as possible by creating different types of map projections. A map projection is a method by which the Earth's curved surface is represented on a flat surface map. Different types of projections are made to show different aspects of the Earth. There are three basic types of map projections. One is made by projecting the surface of the Earth on a plane or flat piece of paper. The paper touches a globe at only one point. Areas near that point show little distortion. A polar map is just such a map. The technical name for this is an azimuthal projection. Another type of projection is prepared by wrapping a cylinder of paper around the globe. Again, where the paper touches the globe, there is little distortion. The distortion mostly occurs towards the outer edges of the paper. Probably the best known cylindrical projection is a Mercator map. The areas near the equator are very accurate but the distortion at the poles is very evident. The sizes of Greenland and Antarctica are extremely exaggerated. This map was designed for navigation, and the true compass direction between any two points can be determined by a straight line. The third type of projection is called a conical projection. This type of map is made into a cone of paper. Where the base of the cone touches the globe, as with the other two types of projections, there is little distortion. These types of maps are often used to show areas in the middle latitudes. The lines shown on maps are latitude and longitude lines. Latitude lines show distances north and south of the equator. These lines travel in an east-west direction. Longitude lines are the lines that run vertically from the North Pole to the South Pole. They measure distances east and west of the prime meridian. Each line of latitude or longitude is given an identifying number. Each degree can also be divided into smaller amounts called minutes and seconds. The equator, or the imaginary line that lies midway between the two poles, is designated as zero degrees latitude. It divides the Earth into two halves, or the northern and southern hemispheres. The poles are at the ends of the axis of the Earth, which is an invisible line about which the Earth rotates or spins. Latitude lines measure 90 degrees north and south of the equator, with the North Pole being 90 degrees north latitude and the South Pole being labeled 90 degrees south latitude. Because lines of latitude are always an equal distance from the equator and from each other, they are known as parallels. Each degree of latitude is about 69 miles, or 111 kilometers. 
Besides the equator, there are other special lines of latitude that you should know. At 23 and a half degrees north and south of the equator, you have the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The Tropic of Cancer is at 23 and a half degrees north latitude, and the Tropic of Capricorn is at 23 and a half degrees south latitude. Because of the tilt of the Earth on its axis at 23 and a half degrees, the area between these two special lines is the only part of the Earth that receives the full rays of the sun during the whole year. The Arctic Circle and the Antarctic Circle are the other two special latitude lines. The Arctic Circle is at 66 and one half degrees north latitude, and the Antarctic Circle is located at 66 and a half degrees south latitude. North of the Arctic Circle and south of the Antarctic Circle are the polar regions. They receive little heat from the sun, which is the reason they are extremely cold regions. The prime meridian was established officially as zero degrees longitude in 1884. It runs through the former Royal Astronomical Observatory at Greenwich in London, England. Longitude lines go east and west from the prime meridian up to 180 degrees in each direction. Each degree of longitude at the equator is approximately 69 miles or 111 kilometers, just like lines of latitude. But as the lines of longitude move toward the poles, the distance between each degree becomes smaller, with it being zero at the poles. Like the equator, the prime meridian divides the Earth into two parts, the eastern and western hemispheres. Lines of longitude are called meridians. Meridian means noon, and places located along the same meridian experience noon at the same time, although their clocks may show something different. This possible difference is caused by the arbitrary designations of time zones. Because the Earth rotates or spins on its axis once every 24 hours, there are 24 time zones. Each time zone is about 15 degrees of longitude. This is determined by dividing 24 hours into 360 degrees in a circle, like the Earth. The time zones begin at the prime meridian. Seven and one half degrees on each side of the prime meridian is called Greenwich time. Each subsequent time zone is 15 more degrees. Noon occurs in the middle of each of these zones at the same time. But by looking at a time zone map, you can see that many of the time zones do not follow straight lines. Adjustments have been made to allow for natural and political boundaries. As you go west from the prime meridian, the time is one hour earlier for each time zone. For example, if it is noon in Greenwich, it is 7 a.m. in New York. That is because New York is five time zones to the west of Greenwich. As you go eastward from the prime meridian, it is one hour later for each time zone. Moscow in Russia is three time zones eastward from Greenwich. Therefore, if it is noon in London, it is 3 p.m. in Moscow. What is the international dateline? As we said before, longitude lines go eastward and westward from the prime meridian for 180 degrees. They meet in the area of the Pacific at the 180th meridian. Here also is a special line called the International Date Line. For much of its length, the International Date Line follows the 180th meridian. But like other time zone lines, the date line is not completely straight to avoid confusion of dates in island groups and land areas cut by the 180th degree meridian. The idea of the international date line can be confusing, so let's work it out together. Here is a time zone map which has been taped to make a cylinder. Let's start at the prime meridian and say it is noon on Tuesday. Moving eastward from London, we will count off the time in each time zone until we reach the international date line. Ready? One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four, five, six o'clock, seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11 o'clock. Arriving at the international dateline, it is midnight on Tuesday. Now, let's go back to the prime meridian and count the other way. Remember, it is noon on Tuesday in London, and since we will now be moving westward, we have to count backward, as it is an hour earlier in each time zone. Here we go. Tuesday, noon, 11 a.m., 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 a.m., 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 a.m. on Tuesday. So on this side of the international dateline, it is midnight on Monday. So traveling east or west across this dateline changes the calendar day. A traveler crossing the dateline going westward loses a day. He has to move the calendar forward. For example, from Monday to Tuesday. Similarly, a traveler crossing the dateline going eastward gains a day. He has to put the calendar back a day or, for example, from Tuesday to Monday. What is a grid? As you draw latitude and longitude lines on a map, you form something called a grid. A grid is the crisscrossing or network of lines that form a pattern on a map. It is primarily used to locate places on a map. Where latitude and longitude lines intersect, you can designate the place by specific numerical coordinates. The coordinates are the degrees of the intersecting lines. For example, Libreville, Gabon is located in Africa, almost on the equator, or zero degrees latitude, and it is located just west of 10 degrees east longitude. Its coordinates are shown as zero degrees latitude, nine degrees east longitude. On maps with larger detail, you could even determine the minutes and seconds of each degree. What is a great circle? A great circle, or a great circle route, is a circle on the Earth's surface whose plane passes through the Earth's center and therefore cuts the Earth into two hemispheres. The equator is a great circle. Two opposing meridians together also form a great circle. The shortest distance between any two points on the Earth is the arc of the great circle that passes through them. Great circles are used frequently to plot airplane routes between two cities. For instance, locate Caracas, Venezuela, and Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, on the part of this globe that shows South America. Follow the curve of the Earth and imagine drawing a line between these two points. If you continued that line all the way around the Earth, you would have drawn a great circle. What are some important parts of a map? Most maps should have a title, a legend, some type of grid system, a direction finder, and a system of measuring distances on the map. The title tells the person looking at it what information is presented on the map. It could show political boundaries, population centers, resources in a country, physical features, or numerous other items of information. Maps use symbols to represent things on the Earth, such as cities, rivers, roads, resources, etc. These symbols could be letters, numbers, lines, colors, dots, or small drawings or pictures. These symbols are explained in the maps, legend or key. The terms legend and key refer to the same thing. A grid, as stated before, is a series of lines used to find exact locations of places on a map. A geographic grid uses latitude and longitude lines, but a grid could also use letters and numbers to delineate boxes or general areas on a map. It is important for people to be able to tell directions on a map. That is why most maps have some type of direction finder. Sometimes it is only an arrow pointing north. From this, you can figure out the other directions. Other maps have a more elaborate configuration called a compass rose. 
A compass rose usually shows the cardinal directions of north, south, east, and west. A compass rose can also show the intermediate directions of northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. Early cartographers drew very elaborate and artistic compass roses on their maps. Every map should also have a scale. Scale shows the relationship between the distance on a map and the actual distance on the Earth. Scale can be represented or shown in three ways. It can be shown as a fraction or a ratio, such as one to two. This ratio means that one unit on the map is equal to two units of distance on the Earth. Scale can also be given in a verbal manner, such as one inch equals one mile. The third way scale is shown is by a graphic scale. This is the most common type of scale. It is a bar scale which looks like a ruler. The scale of a map is determined by how much detail the cartographer wants to fit onto the map and by the size of the area covered. A large scale map shows a great amount of detail, such as a city map. A map of a continent or even the entire world is called a small scale map and it cannot show as much detail as the city map.